these foods cause cancer. In this video, I'm showing you the top seven foods that have been proven to cause cancer. Whether you've just been diagnosed with cancer, years out from your diagnosis, or even if you're high risk of developing cancer, you need to know about these foods. Change your diet and stay cancer free. As a cancer survivor myself, I know that there's an overwhelming amount of conflicting information available online about what you should eat after cancer. Making big changes to your diet can feel overwhelming, but you don't need to make big drastic changes. By making simple changes in reducing or even eliminating these foods, you'll be making big progress in reducing your risk of cancer. Starting with number one, processed meats. The World Health Organization categorizes processed meats as a category one carcinogenic to humans. This means that there's actually enough scientific information to determine that processed meats causes cancer in humans. The scientific evidence is from large epidemiological studies. These studies look at large groups of people and find that if you eat more processed meats, then you're more likely to develop cancer. It's been found to increase the risk of breast cancer, colorectal, colon, rectal, and lung cancer. But what exactly is considered processed meat? Processed meats have been altered due to salting, curing, smoking, fermentation, or anything else that may prolong the shelf life or enhance the flavor. For example, this would be things like deli meat, hot dogs, sausages, beef jerky, or canned meat. But what about white meat or canned or smoked fish? Do they cause cancer too? Well, the majority of the most current research actually looks at red meat, so that's beef and pork but less research looks at white meat, so poultry or fish. At the moment, it's generally thought that white meat and fish are a safe option, but we just don't know quite yet for sure. So if you really wanted to be safe in lowering your risk of cancer by avoiding processed meats, you would avoid both red meat and white meat. Okay, but what about processed meats that are nitrate free? Nitrates are natural chemicals that are used as food additives. They work by stopping the growth of bacteria and enhance both the flavor and the color of food. Nitrates are often added to deli meat, ham, sausage, or hot dogs. They're going to lower the amount of bacteria and prolong the shelf life. But it's not quite clear if the increased risk of cancer associated with processed meats is due to nitrates or if it's due to another compound involved in the processing of meats. We also know that foods that are labeled nitrate-free may still contain nitrates. Nitrates naturally occur in our environment and naturally in food. So when a food is labeled nitrate-free, they often use salary juice or powder to still add nitrates. So this would mean even a food labeled nitrate-free would still contain nitrates. So if you really love processed meats, then you might be wondering, well, how much is this actually gonna increase my risk of cancer? Fortunately, there is a study that answers this exact question. Now, it obviously depends on the amount of processed meats you eat on a regular basis, but it's estimated that if you ate around 50 grams of processed meat every day, which is a fairly small serving of processed meats, then this would increase your risk of cancer by 18%. As a cancer survivor myself, this seems really high. I don't want something to increase my risk of cancer by nearly 20%. No way, I wanna lower my risk of cancer, not increase it. But there is an important distinction that you have to remember. You don't have to go all or nothing. You can still enjoy processed meats once in a while. If you do that, your cancer risk will still be very low. We're talking 50 grams of processed meat every single day. That would be like having a deli sandwich absolutely every day. And believe me, there are definitely people that do that, but that is not good for your cancer risk. But if you want to occasionally enjoy a sandwich or have bacon at brunch, then you should feel good doing it. You know you have lowered your cancer risk by cutting back significantly. But if you didn't really like processed meats to begin with and you can give it up completely, that's even better. But that leads me to the other food that the World Health Organization lists as a category one alcohol. Alcohol has long been known to increase the risk of various types of cancers, breast, liver, mouth, throat, and the risk increases with increasing consumption. Makes sense, right? The more you drink, 
the greater your risk. There are a couple of thoughts as to why alcohol increases the risk of cancer. It's not fully understood, but it is known that alcohol causes inflammation in the body. And this inflammation can cause DNA damage, which eventually can lead to cancer. But what matters most with alcohol and cancer risk is actually the amount of alcohol you drink, not the type of alcohol. It really doesn't matter what type of alcohol you drink. If you're a wine drinker versus a beer drinker or whatever, it really makes no difference. Now, it was previously believed that red wine would be good to drink because of the antioxidant, but this has been proven untrue. There are so many foods that contain diverse and great amounts of antioxidants. It's much healthier to get them from whole foods versus risk increasing your risk of cancer just to get them from red wine. Okay, so you might be wondering about all the old grannies and grandpas from Italy sitting around drinking wine and eating processed meats. Why did they live so long? Clearly this can't be true. Alcohol and processed meats can't be linked to cancer. Well, the truth is, is that Italian cancer rates are higher. Okay, so on to the third food that causes cancer, and that's sugar sweetened beverages. Okay, so hear me out on this one because this does not mean that sugar causes cancer. Let me explain. So it's known that people who regularly drink sugar sweetened beverages, now this is things like Coke, Pepsi, Sprite, or even sugary coffee drinks or like a sugary Starbucks, they're actually more likely to be overweight or obese. The extra weight is actually known to place people at a higher risk of cancer. It's really the effects of sugary beverages that actually increase your weight lead to an unhealthy body weight, which causes inflammation and insulin resistance, and that leads to cancer. Now, many people will oversimplify this and just state sugar causes cancer, but it does not. Cancer is not that simple. Cancer cells, once present, will find a way to grow. Trying to starve cancer is not an effective treatment path. Pushing the agenda that sugar causes cancer is actually damaging to cancer survivors. We know that adults who have been diagnosed with cancer, who have previously never had an eating disorder before, they can actually develop an eating disorder after cancer because there's so much information online pushing restrictive diets towards cancer survivors. So completely and totally being extreme and cutting sugar out of your diet, it won't provide you any additional benefit and it could provide you more stress and harm. But obviously eating large amounts of sugar on a daily basis or drinking sugar sweetened beverages that has no nutritional value and it's gonna have no positive effects on your health. It's this that could cause you to become overweight or obese and that in and of itself could increase your risk of cancer. Okay, so on to the next cancer causing food, red meat. The World Health Organization lists red meat as a category 2A, probably carcinogenic to humans. Red meat would be considered pork, beef, or lamb. Now again, you wanna limit the amount of red meat you consume. If you wanna cut back to a couple times a week, that's great. And if you wanna remove it entirely because you just don't really enjoy it, that's even better. It's known to increase your risk of cancer and that's led many large cancer prevention guidelines to actually suggest you limit or avoid red and processed meats, like you can see here with the American Cancer Society. Now there's never been an association with white meat and cancer risk. That's things like chicken, turkey, or fish. These options would still be very safe to eat. If anything, there might actually be a inverse relationship between the amount of white meat you eat and your cancer risk, meaning that the more white meat you eat, the lower your risk of cancer. But while we're still on the topic of meat, we need to talk about this next group of cancer causing foods, and that's charred foods. When meats are cooked at a high temperature or over an open flame, like during barbecue season, this can actually lead to the release of cancer causing compounds, polycyclic aromatic hydrocarbons. Now, PAH has been found to be carcinogenic and increase the risk of several types of cancers like breast, lung, and prostate cancer. Now, these cancer causing compounds are found when fat or juice from meat drips down, comes in contact with the open flame, and the smoke that is created actually contains these compounds. The smoke contains PAH and that can adhere to your food. When meat is cooked directly over an open flame or when the smoke from the flame actually touches your food, that's when PAH can be transferred to your food. 
but to reduce the risk of forming these cancer-causing compounds during the cooking or barbecuing process, there's a few steps you can take. Cook things low and slow. Instead of cooking things at a high temperature, cook things at a lower temperature over a longer period of time. You could also avoid direct contact with the flame while barbecuing. This will minimize any charring. Now, this next one is interesting because more and more people are actually looking to this option to lower their risk of these cancer-forming compounds. Marinating your meat with acidic ingredients before cooking. This is something like citrus fruits or vinegar. This type of marinade can actually help reduce the amount of these cancer-causing compounds. And lastly, be sure to trim off the fat from the meat before you cook it. By minimizing the fat, you're actually minimizing the formation of these dangerous compounds. On to the next food that's known to cause cancer, and that's high sodium processed foods. This should come as no surprise, but eating foods that are high in salt or sodium, packaged or processed foods, can lead to increasing your risk of cancer. This includes fast food as well. Eating this type of food has been shown to increase the risk of stomach cancer. High sodium intake can actually lead to chronic inflammation in the body. Prolonged inflammation can actually cause damage to the DNA, interrupt the normal cell process, and that is what leads to cancer. But also a high sodium diet can also impair your body's immune system, and this could inhibit your body's ability to actually fight off cancer cells. Okay, so that brings me to the seventh food that causes cancer, and that's trans fats. Trans fats are often found in commercially baked, fried, or processed snacks, and trans fats have been associated with an increased risk of breast and colorectal cancer. Trans fats have actually been phased out in many countries due to their negative health effects. Again, it's thought that trans fats can actually lead to causing cancer in the body because of inflammation and higher levels of free radicals. If there's excessive amounts of free radicals in your body, or if your body is not able to neutralize the free radicals, then this can lead to cancer. Okay, so now that you know these seven foods that cause cancer, now you need to know what foods you should be eating to lower your risk of cancer. That's exactly why I've linked up this next video here. Click the link here. I'll see you in the next video.